guys, welcome to my craft room. Today I'm going to do a little review um, of this Bosch IXO cordless screwdriver. Um, I don't tend to use screwdrivers in my crafting day to day, but the one reason I agreed to giving it a try was because it comes with this cutting attachment, which I think would be really handy, um, especially if you're cutting lots and lots and tough materials. So I've gathered I've gathered materials from my garage, from my craft room, and we're gonna give it a try and see what the verdict is. Um, I had a lot of people curious on Instagram about it, so I've, hopefully I'll answer some of your questions as well. Let's give it a try. Before we get started, I'll show you what else the uh, cordless screwdriver comes with. So you get it in a little box like this. It comes with quite a lot of different um, screwdriver heads, including, there we go, including um, some hex heads which are great for if you're putting IKEA stuff together that needs Allen keys. I don't know how much torque this thing has but I suppose it would be all right for just little jobs. It's rechargeable so you've got an adapter here and it's got like a micro USB plug which I've never seen before in, in a power tool. Um, um, the cutting attachment is an optional extra it's about $25 so it's not a huge amount I think the screwdriver is around the 60 to 70 dollar mark maybe a little bit less okay so um, to attach it you just take off this rubbery it's got like a rubbery sort of protective cap and you click the cutter on and you just turn this dial which locks it in place there's a button here which is forward and reverse for your screwdriver but to cut we're just going to use the forward and you just gently press the button and there you go it's not it's not very loud I've got a microphone on I'll I'll show you how loud it is and it's got a guard but obviously you know don't give it to kids because it it looks pretty sharp um, the serrated blade is probably good for very heavy duty materials. So I'm going to give it a try on things like cardboard, plastic, as well as fabric, and we'll see how we go. Okay, so I thought I'd try the tough stuff first. Um, got some corrugated cardboard here. Um, let's give it a go. Pretty easy. Cutting a curve. You can do pretty gentle curves, but nothing too too angled. Um, I suppose the guard sort of stops stops it moving around. So that that was sort of mid weight corrugated cardboard. Thin card, pretty easy. Um, I've got some sort of plastic vinyl here. We'll do it double layered. It's a plastic bag. Super easy. I do find that at the start it gets a little bit jammed on this on this section here. So you're probably going to have to watch that. Try not to get it too close to your fingers. Okay. I've got a PET bottle. I've been doing lots of um, experimental basket making and cutting these into strips. So I thought this might be handy to try. Oh, that cuts fantastically. I love that. That's a really tough one on my hands with scissors because you get, when you're cutting, you get a bit of the scratchy plastic on you. So, oops, that got jammed. That's great. Okay, now let's give the fabric a try. So I've grabbed an assortment of fabrics out of my scrap pile. Um, some of you were especially keen to know how it went on stretch fabrics and multiple layers of fabric. So um, we'll start with the stretchy fabrics. 
I suspect it's not going to do fantastically, but we'll give it a go. So I've got one layer of, this is just tracksuit, tracksuiting material. Mm. I think we're having trouble starting off. Not great. Once you get going, it cuts okay, but it doesn't give you a very clean edge. So if you're going for accuracy, not good. Let's try another stretch fabric. This is a knitted, knitted polyester. Okay, for a straight line, let's give it a go for a curve. Oh, I can't get started. Mm. Bit wonky with that one. Okay, so stretch fabrics, not fantastic. Let's try something a bit stiffer. This is a like a t-shirt material. It's the kind of thing I use when I make my recycled my recycled rugs. Um, it's a little bit thicker and it's double double thickness, so that might work. A bit hard to get started. Mm, not bit not liking that. Oh, there's a seam. Okay. Okay, that's not too bad once you get started. It's getting a little bit jammed where the seams are. I suppose there's not a lot of room there. Once you get started, it, if you're going to just do bulk cutting, it's okay. But not as accurate as scissors. Okay, let's try some wovens. Okay, so I've got some shirting material here and I'm going to replicate trying to cut a pattern with with it. The one thing I was keen to see was if this could be like a, I suppose, a cheap alternative to some of the professional cutting machines, which are quite expensive and a little bit dangerous to use. Um, so I, you know, I suppose that's what you guys are interested in too. The one thing I noticed compared to professional cutting machines is this, the bottom to the wheel section is quite high so you're not going to get I suppose an accurate cut because it lifts the fabric but we'll give it a go Not having a huge amount of luck with this. You can see it sort of pinches the fabric as it lifts it. So you're not going to get very accurate cuts on single layers of fabric. I think the lighter the fabric is, the more the fabric's going to move. Let's try some heavier fabric. I've got some denim, denim here. Let's give that a go. We'll cut. I've got four layers of quite thick heavy duty denim. That's a bit hard. Let's try two. Two is not too bad, although it does want to stray off in its own direction. Okay, quilting cotton. Oh, by the way, that denim had lycra in it, so it did have some stretch. Okay, quilting cotton. This is two layers. Let's see if we can get a straight line. That 
that's that's a pretty good result. I think it works best with woven fabrics. Let's give it a go around a corner. Not a bad curve. All right, let's see if I can actually follow a pattern line. isn't too bad actually okay got some oil cloth here give that a try that can sometimes be a bit hard on your hands if you're cutting quite a lot of it yeah beautiful Getting some jamming on the back here. Just be aware of that. The stiffer the fabric, the better results you get when cutting, like for accuracy. And lucky last, this is like an Ikea weight upholstery fabric. Um, so we'll give that a go. Let me see. Here we go. Yeah, nice clean cuts. So the verdict is the tougher the fabric, the stiffer the fabric or material, the better it cuts anything fine or stretchy it's going to move around a lot so probably not the best cutting tool for that but i definitely recommend it for sort of heavy duty cutting so if you're cutting like wire mesh um, plastics if you're doing heavy duty upholstery fabrics um, that's really going to take the pressure off your hands if you're wanting accurate cutting of dressmaking fabrics probably not the best tool for that um, if you need to cut a lot of fabric, you might need to invest in a professional cutting machine. But yeah, hopefully that answers all your questions. I'm going to keep this in my craft room because I can see lots of use for this. Um, and whenever I need a screwdriver, I'm going to have that handy as well. So thank you, Bosch, for sending me this to review. Um, if you've got any questions, you can leave a comment on the YouTube video or on my blog post. Um, and hopefully I'll answer those as soon as I can. Thanks. Bye-bye.